All right, guys, welcome back to Blake's Takes. I'm your host, Blake. As always with me, my co-host, Garrett. How you doing, guys? And today, we're going to be finishing up our review on Moon Knight. We had previously reviewed episodes one through three. Mm-hmm. So now, we're going to review episodes four through six in the finale. And uh, where should we start off with this Moon Knight review, Garrett? Uh, well, let's just start out and say that this finale was amazing. I I thought the conclusion of this show was so good. This was one of the best MCU projects, in my opinion. Absolutely. I I could agree with that. Yeah, no, it really was. Uh, So first, let's start with episode four, where we see um, Mark and Steven uh, travel with Layla into like uh, into the um, tomb. Yeah, into the tomb, the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And one thing that stuck out to me with that episode was... Uh, a lot of cool horror aspects in that. You know, there were some jump scares in that episode. Oh, a hundred percent. Definitely the, one of the scariest things that we've seen come out of the MCU. Yeah, yeah, no. And I really liked uh, Layla in that episode as well, as we got you know more background from her character and a lot of more emotions as well from her. Yeah, about like her father yeah. and that whole thing, and uh-huh. like and Harrow, he was really getting in her head that episode. He was like that was his whole thing is because he knew that if he could get in Layla's head and like kind of turn on him. That like if that because if she hadn't turned on him or like, you know, questioned him in that episode, they'd have gotten away fine. Yeah, they would have gotten away fine, but <laughs> they just wasted time. Uh-huh. And they did. Yep. I lo- I liked a lot of the relationship development between Steven and Layla. That was really uh-huh. cool. That was cool to see, too. Like, I mean, even though it is the same, it is the uh the same body and everything. Yeah. Like she was still forming she still had a really strong connection mm-hmm. to Steven. Yeah. Even though he's like a totally different person. Like, and she, but she still loved like different parts about him. Uh huh. And so episode four ends with Steven finding the uh, idol of Amit. Yep. Which then eventually leads to Harrow, you know, finding him and killing him to yeah. get that idol. Uh huh. And which that leads into episode five. And I really, I kind of want to jump to episode five a little quicker because... There's a lot that went down in that episode. Episode five was one of the best episodes, period, in the MCU. Might be number one episode in Moon Knight because I really did enjoy episode one as well. Yeah. It really set the tone for the show. But episode five was amazing. It was really good. Honestly, I feel like you love episodes where you don't know what's going on. Like where Kinda, you yeah. where you can't figure it out because yeah. you love being teased like that. I do. <laughs> Cuz now, like we're even with episode 5, we were even questioning what oh, was going on. I was so confused of what was going on and how episode 4 ended and leading into episode 5, I was like, "Bro, I don't know what's going on, but you know what? Let's just see how it goes." Yeah. And I was just blown away. I'm going to say this right now. Give Oscar Isaac his Emmy Award right now. Dude, he deserves one. He deserves one so bad. He did so good. Oh, my God. I am 100%. Every episode, I am 100% convinced that Steven and Mark Spector are totally two different people. Yeah, two different people in two different bodies. Yeah. It's crazy. It was so good to see. It was. And episode five was a lot of Steven understanding Mark, you know, because they needed to balance the scales. They needed to balance the scales in order to get back up there and save, yeah. you know, Layla and everyone. And so we see how his split personality disorder, how it started to begin with. And it was very emotional. Honestly, I found myself getting teary eyed uh, when, you know, they're trying to celebrate his birthday and yes. it's just Mark and his dad and his mom doesn't want to come down. And Bro, oh, my gosh, she's putting all this blame on Mark about I, his brother's loss. Could you imagine, man? I know. Like, I mean, you as a kid, especially like yeah. if an accident like that were to happen, you would feel guilty. No one would need to tell you to no, feel guilty exactly. about that. And now you got your mom just making the weight 10,000 times yeah. heavier. Like, uh-huh. oh, my God. It's insane. That is that is so cruel. And to it was do. so crushing to see Steven find out like how his life really was and how his mm-hmm. mom really was. Cause he yes. had this totally different perspective of what mm-hmm. his life was like. Yeah. He, he thought his mom was like this wonderful, nice uh-huh. woman. And that was like what Mark forced Steven to believe yep. because he was sick of believing this truth. Yeah. And he's like, I, t- I talk to my mom every day. Like he thought, and he thought she was alive and mm-hmm. everything. And turns out he was just like talking to himself. He was, yeah. ta- he was talking to no one, but in his mind, he would, he still for, like, imagined her a lot Uh that was so weird it was and so while all this is going on you know going from memory to memory they're traveling through the realm of the duat being kind of guided by uh the egyptian goddess uh tawedit the hippo 
Yeah, the hippo. <laughs> Tawere. Tawere, the Egyptian goddess of women and children. Mm-hmm. Well, a little small detail, too, I really liked about it. You know, notice how the hippo, her ears kept, like, flickering? Like yeah. a hippo's yeah, blood? Yeah, they do that for, like, flies and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> but a really cool setting for an episode, too. Oh, yeah. It no, really that was, was. That was a really cool background. Yeah, and so they're traveling through the sand of the underworld, heading to the field of reeds, hopefully. Um, and yeah, like you said, they got to find this balance within themselves, within the heart, mm-hmm. balance the scales. And the entire time, the only way to balance the scales is for Steven to truly understand more about Mark. Yeah. Because he really knows nothing. No. Like everything is a mystery to him. And Mark seems to know all about Steven though. Yeah. And that's why they're unbalanced is because Mark is, uh-huh. ca- is kind of like the leader in this group. But in order for them to be balanced, they have to be like equals in this yeah yeah and but it turns out as we see later in the episode is that if one of them was eliminated then the scales are balanced well yeah so the problem with being unbalanced uh in the underworld as well is if you fall into that sand or on that sand you know land in the sand walk through the sand you're cemented yeah for thousands of years in that sand and trapped there forever yep so that's one issue that they got to worry about, too, because they also start uh, the gods get angry and also send, uh, you know, souls from the sand to go after them. Yeah. And we see Steven sacrifice his life for Mark. Dude, I swear that was heartbreaking. And bro, it was a heartbreaking, a very emotional episode. It was a really emotional, emotional episode. It was emotional seeing Mark having to deal with his past. Mm -hmm. And like reliving the most traumatic memories of his life, which is why Steven was created in the first place. And we see Steven go through the like realization, like I'm not real. Yeah, exactly. Like Like, how just made up. Yeah. Like how would you like he like I feel like each of them. Well, Mark knew he was he was the original, but Steven assumed he was also the original because I mean, like. You don't think of yourself as being made up. Yeah. Like, I mean, what if, what if you were you found out that this personality that you have is totally, like, fake? I or, know. like, was just created out of nowhere? Yeah, and once Steven makes that sacrifice and gets left behind, that's when the scales are finally balanced for Mark. And he could have just rested in peace or eternity. He's he like, could. He's like, nah, I got some shit to deal with back on Earth. Exactly. So that's how episode five ends, is Mark in the field of reeds, you know, just... Having peace. Yeah. You know, he's found peace. And we were left with this big question. Steven dead? Exactly, yeah. And I was really hoping Steven wasn't. Dude, because I, I was so mad. I was like, we just spent all this time getting to know Steven uh-huh. and him having all this character development. Yeah. And now he's dead? I know. Oh my God, bro. I would have been heartbroken yes. if that was permanent. Yes. Absolutely heartbroken. <laughs> so as we see leading in the episode six... Steven is not dead. I mean, he is. He is. He is. But Mark wants to go back for Steve. And Mark was willing to die with him. He was. Like, that's what was going to happen. Which was so beautiful as well. I I mean, (laughs) Jesus Christ. This is crazy. You know, we're just having all these beautiful moments with the same body. Yeah. You know, but in our mind, two different characters. They are two different people, man. Yeah. Two totally different people. Um, So, you know, Mark is just sitting there holding Steven's, you know, dead hands, telling Steven that. He was his true superpower. Uh, I'm just getting like, like kind of emotional just thinking Dude, about know. it. You and know? even though that was like a little corny of a line, it, it was. was very sentimental. It was. And, you know, Mark finally accepting Steven as one, that balanced their, that made their hearts full as well and balanced their scales as well. Yep. Bringing Steven back to life and heading through the doors back ba- up into the, the real world. Yes, into the real world. You could definitely make the argument that was the best episode of the series. Oh, for sure. Episode five was amazing. Episode five was really good. Yeah. So, yeah. So, episode six, that's how it starts out with uh, Steven and Mark getting back together and heading to the real world. We really weren't sure how this final episode was going to play out, too, or like this final battle, you know? Yeah. Were they actually going to have a huge CGI alligator god? Yeah. And was it like, yeah, (laughs) like, yeah, was it going to be that or was it going to just be like Moon Knight versus Harrow? Yeah. Because technically, they were explaining how the avatars can't, re- or how the gods themselves can't really do anything right. without an avatar, but it seems like they have no problem hitting each other. Yeah, well, cause, no, because, I mean, Amit was released. Yeah. And so, you know, Layla has to go release Kanchu as well. Mm-hmm. And Kanchu wanted Layla to be his avatar, and Layla was refusing. I know, she was like, 
You're joking, right? Yeah, yeah. Which leads to another great moment in that episode because, you know, Mark is going to need some help. Yeah. So who does he get help from? From Tawet, the god of children. I said that right, right? Tawet. That's a Tawet. hard name to say. I don't want to say it wrong either. All right, let's just call her the hippo. Okay. <laughs> so the Egyptian <laughs> goddess of women and children. Yeah. Layla becomes the avatar for her. And her costume was badass. It was. I think um I think the actual her actual yes, like no. superhero name is the Scarlet Scarab. It is Scarlet Scarab. Yes. yes. And oh my god, she was a badass. She was badass. She was so good. And like I mean, Layla already knows how to fight. Yeah. So bro, they just gave her the tools yeah. and she was killing it. It was almost like an Egyptian version of like the Wonder Woman 84 suit. But yeah, better. I can see that. No, because, it was you know, definitely still, better. It was definitely better because, like, you know, it still had the wings that yeah. she could extract at any moment. And I liked um, I liked that they weren't, like, gigantic either. Like, no, they, yeah. were just, they were just, like, low-key. She could use them as shields. No, they were, they were, yeah, they were very useful. Yes. And I like that it was sleeveless, too. Um, yeah, just a badass suit, man. It was, it was really cool. And honestly, it made me beg the question. I was like, so Mark and Layla both get this awesome outfit when they became the Avatar for their gods. Uh-huh. Um, what about Harrow? <laughs> Man was still in his robes. Yeah, he was walking on glass. <laughs> I was like, what the, what the heck? I don't know. I mean, but at the a- same Amic, time, Amic like, kind of did him dirty. Yeah, but like, it's it's also it it's makes sense Ethan for Hawk. it makes sense for his character. I don't know if you can really put Ethan Hawke in a, in a get up like you did for. Well, I mean, not like I mean, it didn't have to be. It didn't have to be like an athletic thing or like yeah. a or like a warrior thing. Like it could have just been like. You know, throw some Egyptian, you know, gold yeah. on them or something. Yeah, let's also talk about how stupid the other gods were. Oh my this. god, I got, I got a rant that on might, that. That might be the only, yeah. you know, beef we got. That yeah, I, I let me rant on that. Okay, go ahead. Oh my god. Okay, Wh- what is this trial? What is this trial? Like they summon Harrow, and I'm like. Okay, one, Conchu, his, like, literally his entire thing is bringing people to justice. Like, that's, li- or, like, vengeance or whatever yeah, yeah. after it's after it's already been done. Yeah. That's his, that's literally his whole thing. Like, do you really think he's gonna have his suspicions with no background? Like, you couldn't, I mean, I get Conchu's messed up in the past, according to the other gods. Uh-huh. But, like, you can't give him the benefit of the doubt we're just gonna listen to this random Harrow guy and be like, be like, yeah. No, he's fine. And, you know, Amit's like our biggest bad guy. Yeah. And, and, but, you know, if if someone's attempting to release them, this requires no further investigation. This this is good. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're kidding me. If if Amit's released, then the world ends. But you're just cool, like, calling it a good 15 minutes. Be like, we're good. Yeah. No, no need to look into this any further. No, nah, that was really, like, the only thing that I found kind of weird. And, um... The season finale, the episode, you know, it was 43 minutes, so it was shorter than the other ones. The, mm-hmm. the previous ones have been like 50 plus minutes. Yeah. So I think it could have been a little longer because it did kind of seem to jump from scenes, like especially when um when Kanchu was getting his ass kicked yeah. uh, by Amit, and then uh, Mark and Steven come back to the real world, and it just kind of jumps to Kanchu talking to uh, Steven and um Mark, uh you know, in the other part of the uh desert yeah so i mean there was definitely aspects that i think kind of jumped around but for the most part it, it did a solid job at concluding the the season it did it did no there wasn't like any really uh holes left no no for no. them that like left no. us with questions no if anything that, that was just you know maybe leaving some stuff on the cutting floor and yeah and editing you know choices but other no, than that, it was it was a good finale for yeah, sure yeah no it was was um, not was not disappointed with it at all. No, nah. uh, I mean the giant god CGI fight. That was cool. That was really cool. Yeah, I thought, I, because, and, and it was cool to see like the hits that Moon Knight was taking, where it's like almost like the they weren't the same hits, but like when Kanchu was down, yeah. Moon Knight was down, uh-huh. and when he was throwing a punch, so was Kanchu. Yes. I was like, that's pretty cool. It was cool. And speaking of the fight, speaking of the fight, which one was badass, mm-hmm. but two, so Moon Knight. Is about to lose once again. I mean, and yes, here we go. He blacks out once again, and it's not Steven or Mark. Uh uh-uh. uh. And he ends up, you know, killing, winning. Yeah, winning, yeah, killing, killing everybody, Harrow and killing everybody. And he didn't, Harrow wasn't dead yet. Oh, true, 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 true. He was knocked the fuck out. He was knocked the fuck out, but <laughs> he, he wasn't dead yet. Yeah, yeah, not dead yet. Uh, but everyone else was dead. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it, I mean, it can leave no other question. 
as it as it's got to be, you know, Jake Lockley. Yeah. Which we do get that question answered come post credit scene. We do. And there was only this was only the second time in the series where um they both blacked out. Yeah. And they don't remember. Yep. And I think and P, I feel like people have been giving this a lot of beef is um they're like Oh, what? You black out? It, you guys both black out and people are dead and you guys have no questions. You're just like, oh, let's move on with our day. But I mean, I feel like they both assumed it was one or the other. Yeah. Because like, I mean, maybe like maybe Steven was the one who did it, but he doesn't remember doing it. Maybe it was Mark who did it and he doesn't remember doing it. Like they assumed it was one of the personalities. They're not really like suspicious that there could possibly be a third one in right. there. Because and now that they're both like more aware and um, because like Steven, when he was totally unaware of Mark's existence, he would just black out. Yeah. But now that they're both aware of like what's going on, like when Mark is taking over or when Steven is taking over, um, the other person, the other personality is still like in the they're in the passenger seat, just seeing right. all this go down. And I mean, they, they it's not like they don't wonder, you know, what happened and who it was. But yep. it's like, how many questions can you ask or how? How you know, could they figure that how, out? Yeah, how could yeah, they figure it out? That, like, I mean, they just kind of got to move on with their day uh-huh. and and like and like move on with the mission because yeah. like they can't stop and try and figure out what's going on with them. Yeah. They just like kind of got to keep on going. Uh huh. And um, I mean, shit. W- if you were to if you were to black out, would your first suspicion be there's another person inside me? <laughs> uh, yeah. And so then that moment leads to them uh trapping Amit and Harrow's body. Which, because that way, it's harder for Ama to be released again. Yeah. Um, which, if he dies, then it'd be impossible. But Mark makes a choice, you know, him mm-hmm. and having his, you know, past of killing. He doesn't want to kill anymore. Leaves Harrow alive. And he said he, you know, wants to take that chance. But because he finished a deal, he wants to be released. Uh-huh. He wants Kanshi to release him. To, re- to release them. And he does. And I'm like, oh, shit. No more okay, Moon Knight. No more Moon Knight. Yeah. How are we gonna keep seeing Moon Knight? Hence comes the post credit scene, and Kashu's like, Mark was worried about me wanting Layla as an avatar, but why would I be worried when all I really need and want is this third personality, Jake Lockley? Yeah, I. <laughs> Jake Lockley is like, uh, they don't speak for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Hero is in the mental institution, and uh-huh. Jake Lockley. Goes in there, kills everyone, takes Harrow. Oh, uh, he, yeah. he killed one of the guards. He yeah. killed one of the guards. Okay, maybe not everyone, but yeah, no, he killed he, he killed, killed that guard. You just see him on the floor with blood as yeah. he's wheeling him yeah, out. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Takes Harrow to this really nice limo. What was it, like a Bentley limo? It was a very nice. Limo. It was. And did you notice uh, the front license plate it says Spectre? Yes. Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, <laughs> that was the first thing I noticed. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> um. So they get in the limo, and that's when Kanshu explains, you know, his plan again yeah and he was like uh, and he was saying how mark has no idea how like deep his demons yes. are or something like that uh-huh. oh my god and he's like meet my friend jake and jake turns around to harrow in spanish yes. and says you know his judgment day is here mm-hmm. bang god and that's how we ended that was a good post credit scene that was a really good post credit scene yeah. and you know i was a little it seems to be a very common theme with these like anti-heroes or you know like uh not even anti-heroes, but like people who don't care about killing, uh-huh. they eventually start to care about killing. And you yeah. know what I mean? Like, cause Mark had like no problem with it. I mean, he was, or he did have some issues with it. He didn't love the fact that he was a killer no. or that he killed people, but his, but he, know, could, he would still do it. I'm was. like, and I'm the, like, and the reason that would, you know, he would try to make him himself feel better is, you know, that these people deserved it. Yeah. But okay, I don't know. I just see. I just think it's like unnecessary for like everybody who is a killer. Like, why do they always have to? That's the why development. Do they always, why do they always have to change and be like killing's wrong? I don't know. It's that's the character it, development. It's cool. Oh my God, it is cool. I mean, come on. Like, what don't you like about just a ruthless person who's willing to do like anything, yeah. including killing, to save the day? If it's required. I mean, in this instance, it wasn't required, but yeah. I mean, why even set that risk? <laughs> why even leave that risk? It does not make sense to leave Harrow alive and possibly release this powerful god again. It does not make sense. Okay, it doesn't make sense, but... He didn't... I guess he didn't have to be the one to kill him. Yeah, yeah he doesn't have to be the one to kill him, but you gotta, you know, leave another story 
and uh, you know laid ahead in the future for something i don't know i mean who uh, knows what they're gonna do well, i mean they're probably did, done with Ahmed, but i mean I'm they, saying, yeah no we're definitely done with Ahmed because yeah. harrow's dead but um yeah, i mean they yeah. definitely they definitely laid that out so jake lockley could exactly make, make his yeah. intro look there's a reason you know the reason for everything okay? there, was, there was a reason for that but i'm just saying it just seems like a really common thing like every person who's willing to kill ends up not killing at some point and i think like the only acceptance to this is like punisher yeah. and that's why i love punisher because yeah. he has zero issue with killing people so there was also reports of the director leaving something on the cutting room floor in moon knight uh which was eternals they were gonna have eternals and moon knight i remember hearing about uh-huh. that yeah i don't know how i would have felt about that i know because now in the mcu we expect some collaboration with you know all these, you know, heroes now. Yeah. But I tend to be glad when, you know, these shows or movies are now more recently, you know, leaving some things like that on the cutting room floor because it, it would just be... It'd be too it, much. It'd be too much. And it doesn't... It didn't need to be in there. No, it didn't. However, I am I am looking forward to see how this show um, collaborates with Black Panther 2 because... Um, bo- I, I watched something that said, uh, boss is actually was an Egyptian God. Yes. Uh-huh. Boss was an Egyptian God, yeah. but like diverted away from that culture and became the main God for Wakanda. Yeah. So I'm very curious to see if we see anything like Moon Knight related in yeah. Black Panther 2. And that would be really cool to see like any kind of God interaction between like Khonshu and yeah. boss. No, yeah, that it, would be really cool. Yeah, the thing is now is okay. Now, where what does this lead to for Moon Knight? You know, yeah. where are we gonna see him next? I hope we see him in a movie next. I do too. I mean, I like not maybe not the main person. I think but we're definitely gonna get another season for sure, another season. But I want to see him like as a feature in a movie before we see another season. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, just so we can see his role in the MCU. Yeah, and the designer of the uh, the Moon Knight outfit for the show uh if they were to create a moon Knight outfit for jake lockley it would have been the uh the black one in the comics oh really yeah so i'm sure they're gonna do that mm-hmm. yeah, that's they, gonna they cool. got to because he because he's the only moon knight now yeah because yeah. yeah yeah he's the only moon knight damn so how Ooh, this is gonna be actually really interesting yeah it is how are they gonna get you know moon knight back with with mark and steven I don't know, but mm. they they're gonna have to start wondering about that blacking out because yeah. they're gonna wake up in some screwed up situations huh. and they're gonna be like, uh, Steven, did you bring us here? Mark, did you bring us here? No, okay, then who is controlling our body? Nah, this is gonna be an interesting situation for sure. As long as as I see Oscar Isaac, I I'm excited. I mean Seriously, Damn, he, he got so much screen time just because of playing so many, you know, playing two him, characters. Yeah, playing yeah. two characters, yeah. It was now, great. It was really good, and I swear he better get some recognition for this show. He does. Oh my god! Oh, this, I know it's a this, Marvel show. I know it's superhero shit, but he better win a goddamn award. Dude, anybody who can be that convincing as two different people is an extremely talented actor. Like um, James McAvoy yeah, doing I mean, Split. Yeah, split. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing performance. He didn't really get any recognition for it either. No, I mean, he didn't. He, I don't think he got a nomination and, for bro, it. Bro, people would say he was like terrifying when he turned into like the beast one. Uh huh. Like he, like his body. I don't know, man. Yeah, he, he almost yeah. It's like he. he it's you like know, he literally torted his body into a totally different human. It was it's crazy. There's a lot of depth when you have to play yeah. two totally different people and a lot of screen time for the actor and a lot of screen time and for him to be able to switch like that between being Steven and Mark at, at the same time mm-hmm. like on a dime like that mm-hmm. is very impressive no it, it was very impressive and ended up loving the relationship they had and really gave us some of the more emotional moments in the MCU and you could say like one of the top performances in the whole MCU you know you got RDJ as Iron Man I'm trying to think of other great performances. Uh, you know, Tom Hiddleston is Loki. Mm-hmm. Like Oscar Isaac is easily in the top of that ranking. As far as people who like fit the person that they're playing. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. Uh huh. I mean, Marvel's always been amazing with the casting. Yeah, they yeah, really they have. actually have. <laughs> like they, I don't think they've picked. Maybe they've had like one or two wrong picks, in my opinion. But who are, who are those one or two? I'm not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can already guess one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who is the two? 
Maybe just one. <laughs> Maybe just one. <laughs> one more thing I cannot miss with our review on this show is the music. Yeah. I can't miss the music, bro. I know. <laughs> so recently we did our top five MCU theme rankings. Mm-hmm. Okay. So at the time, <laughs> the uh, the Moon Knight score, it wasn't out yet. It was not. And so once we posted it, it started, it was available to stream. And I promise you, if that was out earlier, Moon Knight would have been the, okay. So the song, the theme is called Full Moon Fight. And it's the first time that he summons the suit in episode one at the very end. I will tell you right now, if that was out earlier, that would easily be in my top five MCU themes. It might be like number three for me. 100%. That's oh my God. That is an extremely good song. It was so good. The score in general was beautiful. And I love how with like every character that they do that comes from like a certain region. Yeah. Like they stick, they use like elements from that culture uh, in the music yeah, yeah, and yeah. you definitely heard it from Moon Knight oh, as yeah, well. Yeah. You got to stick close to the, to the source material for sure. Mm-hmm. So overall, I really loved Moon Knight. I thought it was an amazing show. It was a very good show. And one of the better MCU projects for sure. Absolutely. Definitely one of the better parts of Phase 4. Yeah. Um. So where would you rank it among the Phase 4 TV shows? Okay, among the TV shows... Because we got uh, Hawkeye, Loki, WandaVision, and Moon Knight. Right? And What If. What? And... Oh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Falcon Winter yes. Soldier. okay. And... I'm not counting what if. Okay. Yeah, we're doing live action. Okay. And then, uh, so now Moon Knight is number five yes. for the live action shows. Uh-huh. So, those, <laughs> of those five, yeah. all right, well, we can take away Hawkeye and Falcon Winter Soldier. Yes. So, top three is definitely, uh, top three would definitely be Loki, Loki WandaVision, yeah. or, and Moon Knight. Yeah. Not, not in that order. No. So... Whew, that's that's tough, rough. man. That's a rough. That's tough. All right. Well, I already. So it. I think it's gonna be between Loki and Moon Knight. Yes. No. It, definitely top two for me among the TV shows is Moon Knight and Loki. It's tough because I don't know who's number one though I know, because I, it, know. I love how Loki expanded on a character that we already knew and there was a lot of character development from Loki that we hadn't yes. seen before. And it did a lot for the future of the MCU. Yes, Opened it did. Up the whole multiverse. Literally the whole reason for the entire multiverse. Yeah. And the music was great in that too. The music was... It's tough because, to... because now Moon Knight, that was something very new and fresh for the MCU. Yes. And did an amazing job. Yeah. Oscar Isaac, amazing performances. Music was amazing. This is tough, man. You know... I think I'm going to have to give number one to Loki. Okay. I'm going to have to give it to Loki. Okay. Moon Knight's definitely a close second, though. Okay. And then WandaVision at number three. I don't know if it's the recency bias, you know, itching at me, but... It's possible. It's possible. But right now, I I do want to put Moon Knight at number one. Really? Uh, It's tough, bro, because I really did enjoy Loki. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. And I love... Shit. And I, I did love the chemistry between Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. Dude, it was very good. Oh. I, I mean, I, I I gotta stay with Loki okay. at number one. Okay. Moon Knight was really good, but I don't think it quite snatched the number one spot. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's fair. Both were very good. They are. All right. But now, where would you rank it among Phase 4 in general? Movies yeah. included. Phase four in general. Okay, let's right. go through yeah. the list. Okay, so we got all the TV shows that yes. I just mentioned. And let's add on Black Widow. Let's add, uh, okay, Eternals. Eternals. Spider-Man No Way Home. And Doctor Strange 2. Okay. We got nine, nine things. Nine things. All right. Oh, shit. I forgot Shang-Chi. Oh, shit. Fuck. And I love Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi oh, is really good. that's up there for me. Damn it. Ooh, oh, shit. Damn. Shang-Chi, ooh. That's the second best movie to me, easily. Oh, for sure. For phase four. For sure. So, like, movies, if I were to rank movies right now, yeah. I would go No Way Home, Shang-Chi, Multiverse of Madness, yeah. Black Widow. Okay, so that's where I'd go for movies. So where I'd place Moon Knight in the midst of that? Well, Moon Knight is definitely better than Black Widow and Eternals. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then Eternals. And, the, you know what? Eternals at the bottom. You know what? It was better than Doctor Strange. I'm putting it above Doctor Strange. Okay. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I am. Uh, so, I, can, I can definitely see that. Uh-huh. So it is definitely in the top five for me within phase four. Definitely top five for phase four. Because let's see, phase four for me, I'll go Spider-Man No Way Home, 
Can I do this now? <laughs> I don't know. I this don't is know. Tough. This is like on the spot right now. This is on the spot. Okay. Okay. On the spot. Maybe things could change later. Spider Man No Way Home, Shang Chi, and then I'm gonna either have Loki or Moon Knight. I I could I think so I agree with that. Easily top four for me. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So except yeah, Moon Knight for me would be four because I say Loki. Yeah. So okay. yeah. So I do I do No Way Home, Shang Chi. Yeah. Uh, Loki, and then Moon Knight. Okay. No. Yeah. The more the more I, you know, think back on Shang Chi. I love that movie. It's it really good. It, it is a really, really good, good. movie. Yeah. Great introduction to a character. It was. And Simu Liu, such a likable guy. Right? So likable. He like, is very likable. You see he, all the, he's so humble. He is. And when you see him with his fans, it's like great. Yeah. And also, bro, he's like he's like called out Disney on multiple occasions. Oh, he's just a star that came out of nowhere. I know. And yeah. didn't even know Kung Fu when they hired him. Huh. Didn't even know anything. Yeah. And they and still killed it. Yeah, he did kill it. What are your final thoughts on Moon Knight though? Final thoughts on Moon Knight. Um uh, loved the lore and intro to all the Egyptian gods. Uh-huh. Honestly, like I love that type of yeah, shit. Yeah, it's so, very interesting. So yeah, to me that was very interesting. I love that we saw a lot of interaction between him and Kanchu because of that. Yeah. Uh CGI was good, especially that final fight between Kanju and Kanchu and Amit. Yeah. Amazing character development that we saw for Steven and Mark. Yeah. Like, I mean, dude, we saw yeah. so much character development from two different characters from the same person yeah. in the same body. Uh-huh. Like, to me, that was crazy. Amazing performance from Oscar Isaac. From Oscar Isaac, need- needless to say. Yeah. If I were to give it a score out of 10, yeah. let's go 9.2. 9. That's good. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's a high score for a show. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give it a 9.2. Okay. I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, if you listen to this episode and haven't watched Moon Knight, clearly you just got spoiled of everything. Yeah. Uh, but that's your own damn fault because you should have watched Moon Knight. Yeah. Because I mean, it's a great show. Final episode's been out how long now? Uh, only a week. But. Only a week, but <laughs> <laughs> whatever, man. You know, if you haven't seen any of that shit, that's your fault. <laughs> you got to keep up. You got to keep up with MCU. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this review on Moon Knight. Uh, once again, Oscar Isaac, give the man his flowers right now because he did an amazing job in this show. He did truly uh, made me forget about the whole Star Wars debacle. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll we'll go we'll get into that on another day. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna rant on that right now, but you know, we They yeah. fly now. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they fly now. Bro, I love how he was making fun of his own lines. He was. <laughs> Everybody was making fun of their oh own lines. Oh my god. And then uh uh who plays Finn? What's his name? John Boyega. He was like They've been flying since the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like these actors knew more about Star Wars than the writers themselves. Oh my god. But yeah, Star Wars for another day because we do have Obi-Wan coming up. Oh yeah. Oh buddy. Looking forward. Looking forward to that. Uh, So yeah, Moon Knight, there it is. Amazing show. Go watch it if you haven't already, even though we just spoiled everything for you if you haven't. That's going to do it for us here on Blake's Takes. I'm your host, Blake, and my co-host. I'm Garrett. And we'll see you next time on Blake's Takes. See you guys.